What's going on internet? Mark here with Car Audio Fabrication. For as long as I can remember, I have always loved cars. I've loved working on them, I've loved customizing them, and of course, I've loved working on the audio system. As a car guy, it's been a long time goal of mine to build my version of the ultimate car guy garage. I wanna give you some tips on how you can build your own version of your ultimate car guy garage. I'm gonna show you how to take measurements and start mapping everything out. I'm also gonna show you how to then transfer that plan into 3D using a free CAD program. It all starts with a plan. Let's go. So as you guys well know, I am all about car audio. So obviously my version of the Ultimate Car Guy Garage is gonna be geared towards car audio. But let's say you're more of a gearhead or you're more of somebody that's into imports or domestics or muscle cars. I really think that this video will have a lot of value for everyone that's into cars. That's because no matter what your focus is in the car realm, I think there's three things that we all want. We all want plenty of tool storage. We also all want a well-organized work area so each different task is easy to accomplish. Finally, it's super important to have those man cave features. You gotta have a TV and you gotta have a refrigerator. So let's head on over to the shop. So in order to begin, I'm gonna start with graphing everything out. Now you can see here, I have some graph paper and you can literally print this off online. I just searched free graph paper on Google and you can just print it just like so. So step one, I'm actually just gonna draw the rough layout on here just by looking. So now that I have my rough layout here, it's time to get some dimensions. What I do here is go around the full perimeter of all the walls within the shop. As I measure each wall, I record its measurement onto my drawing. Ultimately in this corner that I'm measuring, I plan to install a bunch of cabinets for tool storage and for my router stations. So I'm making sure that I'm really careful to get exact measurements. Now since we're doing cabinets, we're gonna to wanna to make sure we also get the height of everything because we're gonna be mounting those on the wall, obviously, so let's get the height. Finally, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get all the minor details into your sketch as well. For instance, I have this here stripper pole right in the middle of my work area, but I got that drawn in too. So I've got all my dimensions now. Let's get on the computer and start modeling it in 3D. All right guys, so we're in SketchUp right now and this is a free 3D modeling program that you can download online. And I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to mock up a shop in this quickly easily let's go so the first thing we're gonna do when we come in here there's gonna be this little painting lady we don't need her and then next we're gonna go to window model info and in here I like to change my units I like everything to be in fractional inches so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna basically start with drawing out the full perimeter so I'm gonna start in this one corner that you guys saw. Now see when I go around how it changes to different colors? That's the axis that you're drawing on. So if this green axis is, uh, let's say Y and red is X and blue is Z, I know this is the X axis, this is the Y axis, right? It just calls it the green axis. But to start, I know that this wall was 253 and three quarters inches. And if you look down in the lower right hand corner, you can see I punch that in and then I just click enter and it draws 253 and three quarters inches along that green axis. So you have to kind of remember we are in a perspective view. So this line doesn't look like it's parallel to the green axis, but if you go here, you can see that it has the same vanishing point. So I'm basically going to go through and just type in all these different measurements. It was 12 and three quarters inches to the door. Then the door was 96 inches. And if you measured anything in feet, you could simply just type one and then do the foot symbol and it will do one foot. So I'm not gonna bore you guys to death, but I'm gonna go through real quick and do this perimeter. So you can see here at the end of my full perimeter, I was off just a little bit, about a half an inch. So I'll just delete this line now. And what's important here is you can see that we've created a full perimeter and we now have a surface. 
So now what we want to do is create the walls. And I'm going to show you guys how easy and awesome this is to do. So I'm just going to click this surface. And there's this tool over here called the offset tool. So we'll click that. And it doesn't really matter what you make the thickness of your walls. I typically go with six inches. So if you go six inches, hit enter, you can see that we've completely offset all of our original perimeter. So now we have two surfaces, this surface here and this surface. So what we're gonna do now is I know that my ceiling height is 126 inches. So we're gonna use this push pull tool and I can click that surface. And then again, in the bottom right hand corner here, you can see the distance that I'm pushing and pulling it. So I'm gonna do 126. So that gives me my ceiling height. You can see how powerful this program really is. I've only spent about five minutes at this point and I have a complete layout of the shop. So now what is also cool about this program is people from all over the world actually create different models and share them. And there's actually a guy that put together a full lineup of all the cabinets that I plan to use. Let me open that up. You can see here, he actually modeled the full lineup. And if you couldn't find the particular models that you were using, you could always go to the store and just take some measurements for the different sizes that you are interested in. You could model them as well. Uh, there's definitely tutorials on YouTube and everywhere else for learning how to model some of these different features. But you can see I have a nice little array of stuff here that I can use within the model. So what I can actually do is I can go over to the model here and let's say that I want this side cabinet. I can just control C, which copies. I can switch back to this. I can paste it in there, control V. If we go down to move and I click a point on the bottom of this foot here, I can move it wherever I want it in the room. So let's say I want to rotate first because I know it's going to be up against this wall. So you can see how I officially have a cabinet tucked in the corner. Now, of course, I probably wouldn't want to use that particular cabinet in the corner. You can see here he's also got some of these modeled. This would actually probably be the guy that I'd want to use in the corner. Anyway, this is a 15 inch shallow one. I plan on using 24. You can see that you can measure everything with this tool as well. So now you guys have an idea. I'm gonna do some modeling here. Let's see what I can come up with. Here you can see I've officially got a few different cabinets positioned and I've placed many of the different drawers. Something else that's cool about this program is you can actually use different textures and paint colors to repaint everything. So it's actually accurate to what you plan on creating in real life. I've got the whole countertop drawn out as well. You can see I have three different router stations there and you can also see that I have some slat wall mounted on the wall. Now if you're planning on building a nice garage, I would definitely recommend slat wall. Many different stores actually have slat wall on their walls and there's tons of different mounting hooks and hangers that you can mount into the slots and then you can hang up all of your different tools and always have them organized really well. My plan is to have all my mobile solution smart templates mounted on the slat wall that's next to the drill press and then I plan to have all of my different router tools and everything underneath the counters mounted on this slat wall. Now, like any project, I think it's always important to build in phases. So here is phase one of what I plan to do with my shop. You can see that there's plenty of slat wall space. There's plenty of drawers for tools. I have some storage in the cabinets for some larger items. And since I'm a woodworker, I also wanted to point out that I have this area back here. I've intentionally spaced the cabinets away from the wall so I can run the dust collection back behind them. And in this large gap, what I'll actually do is build a box that's sort of like a trough that I can sweep extra wood and dust into and it'll pull a vacuum through that as well. On the ground there you can see that I have an outline for a future island that I plan on building that'll be part of a future stage. So obviously I have some more work to do but I'd love to know what else do you guys think that I should add. At this point this is just the start of the project but I think I'm off to a good start. If you're new here whenever I make a video like this I always turn it into a project playlist. So you can expect to see more videos following this one that are focused on this project. Be sure to subscribe so you can be notified when they're released. As always, a special thanks goes out to Brian, Eddie, Ali, EJ, Rory, Truman, Emmanuel, Jerry, and the rest of the Patreon support team. Thank you guys for helping support this content. And also thank you to you, the viewer. Thank you for watching. If you could smash that like button, it would be greatly appreciated.